In the news this week, an influential No campaign advocate prepares to land in Perth to consolidate support against the voice to parliament. An exclusive interview coming up. Don't forget the homeless. National Homelessness Week to raise awareness for the disadvantaged as calls for a rental freeze continue. And has the Royal Show lost its way? Our feature interview on the future of Perth's beloved annual festival. And later, Dr Andrew Miller's comment. This is The Evening News with Ivan Loom and Maliva Thorne. Good evening. The No campaign in WA will receive a major boost with one of Australia's most successful First Nations businessmen and former politician coming to Perth to advocate against the voice to Parliament. In an exclusive interview about his trip to Perth, Warren Mundine details his motives and what he'll be doing. I spoke with him earlier. Warren Mundine, thank you for joining me. Uh, I understand you're coming to Perth. What will you be doing and what are your plans? Uh, well, I'll be doing a couple of things. One is I'll, I'll be having some uh, uh, meetings uh, with uh, with uh, West Australians uh, in regard to the voice and uh uh, and why it is uh, you know, the worst thing that we could ever do to, to this country. And the other one, of course, is um, uh, uh, fundraising for the campaign and that as well. Is the no campaign financially better off than a yes campaign or does it really matter? It does matter in certain places, but uh, the, the it's about 10 to 1 in regard to the funding for the Yes campaign because they've got all the big corporates, they've got all these charities, they've got the sporting bodies, they've got everyone on board and they're donating lots of money to the campaign. Uh, from our side, we uh, you know, we've got you know, ordinary Australians who are, are donating to our campaign, you know, they just click in and toss a couple of dollars in or whatever they need to do. Uh, but but what it's done for us is a bit of a favour, you know, uh, in that we have to be very disciplined about how we spend our money and how we target it. And so far, you know, it's it's doing us uh, really well. You know, if you're in the in the Sydney uh, Daily Telegraph this morning, the polling yeah. is just, you know, we according to their polling, we have all the states and we have the national uh, figures as well. And it looks and it looks really well for us. But we've got to, we we can't be complacent. They got heaps of money, and they, and they will be coming at us in the next few months for sure. According to our WA News poll, also reveals that nine out of ten of our viewers polled already made up their mind. I mean, is that a good thing or bad thing for the No campaign? It's a good thing because it, how you're looking at things is that uh, the polling tells us that the uh, when people say no, it's a very strong no because they know because they they get abused they get attacked and all that type of stuff uh, so when they say no it is it is that's it you know we're not uh, we've made up our mind we're going to uh, you know make sure that uh, we're staying with the no the issue for the yes campaign is a lot of their people uh, you know there's still a, you know about nearly half of their people are still uh, soft so we could change there but what will be the things that you'll be doing and how many community engagement sessions that you're going to be having oh we're going to have uh well i'm over there for a few days so i'll be having about four or five uh there, there are other ones that are coming up as well as well as uh we'll have a couple of uh, dinners and that which is looking at fundraising any fundraising targets or that's confidential at the moment that's confidential at the moment, but uh, we, uh, we, we've got targets and things we have to meet as uh, the campaigners, as well as uh, getting people to, uh, uh, to listen to our story and also to uh, agree with us. Now, just uh, briefly on the other issues, very quickly before we wrap this up, um, the Aboriginal land heritage laws here in Western Australia, protests are expected to be happening on Tuesday. Um, there are a lot of rumours flying around at the moment, but what do you make of the latest developments? Well, look, uh, the latest developments is in regard to that, uh, look, uh, the talk is probably that they're going to pull that legislation. Uh, to me, look, uh, just to make sure that everyone understands, this is not a bunch of that are complaining or anything like that. These are people who, are like all Australians, we like to protect our, our cultural heritage, whether it's Aboriginal or, or colonial or whatever, uh, but it has to be reasonable. The voice debate and the land heritage laws should be separate debates. They are separate things, they're different things. But then uh, there's a bit of a co correlation between the both now. Um, is it unfortunate? What it is, it, it gets down to trust. 
uh, and and this is what the referendum is, and this is how the referendum gets caught up in this process. Uh, from day one, uh, the the federal government and uh, has been saying, you know, trust us. This this is this is going to be the panacea, the magic wand that's going to fix everything. Uh, but we won't tell you what the details are until after that. Yeah. And people have been saying, well, come on, come on, we need to have those details. And so it was like a perfect storm. Then the heritage uh, legislation in Western Australia and another number of other states got caught up in that whole process because then people said, well, is this is this some of the things that are going to happen after after the referendum? And and uh, and and then you look at the Uluru statement from the heart, and it says yes, and it talks about treaties, and it talks about a whole wide range of things. So uh, so it's been an own goal by the government, both the Western Australian government and the federal uh, Australian government, in that by by t- talking about trust, but then not taking people in with that. Tr- trust about moving forward. Warren Mundine, thank you for joining me and I look forward to speak to you again uh, when you come to Perth in a few weeks' time. Okay, thank you very much. As Australia's housing shortage continues to fuel the rental, homelessness and cost of living crisis, ironically, the National Homelessness Week event begins tomorrow. During the next seven days, communities and non-for-profit service providers will amplify their advocacy with the theme, It's Time to End Homelessness. Grace Harrington reports. The theme for Homelessness Week this year is It's Time to End Homelessness. Beginning on Monday the 7th of August and running through to Sunday the 13th, Homelessness Week aims at raising awareness of the impact of homelessness and the solutions required to end it. Earlier this year, a report was made following an inquiry into homelessness within Western Australian communities. The report included over 300 pages with 29 findings and 57 recommendations, making it one of the biggest reports the WA Parliament has seen. Its findings will be debated in the Upper House next week. Greens MLC Brad Petit has been a great advocate for combating homelessness within the community. He believes the question that must be asked is whether the government is serious about ending homelessness rather than simply managing it. At the moment, we're not seeing new funding at the level that's going to end homelessness. And unfortunately, um, too many of the key indicators are going backwards in terms of street present people is increasing, obviously the broad, in the context of a, of a broader housing crisis. So if we're serious about actually addressing functional homelessness and ending it, then we're going to need lots of new funding and lots of new investment in key facilities to get people off the streets, out of cars and into long-term housing with the right kind of services they need. Despite the rising cost of living, ending homelessness is not an unachievable goal. You need to remind people that there actually is enough houses for people. Um, they're just not properly distributed so they can be people's homes. Also take the Air- Air- Airbnbs and short-term accommodation as an example. We've got over 20,000 of those in Western Australia, just in the Perth metro area, 5,000 alone. We need the right incentives for those people who are making really good money out of, out of Airbnb to put them back in the long-term market because we are in a housing crisis. There are many potential solutions that may contribute to putting an end to homelessness, and Homelessness Week will help to shine a light on this growing problem. Shelter WA is hosting Homelessness Week this year, and the organisation has secured $60,000 worth of funding for local communities to showcase the issues and solutions within their area. Grace Harrington, WAMN News. Hi there. Are you looking for a new home or want to refinance your car mortgage to get a better rate? At AA Finance Solutions, we have the expertise and knowledge to help you to find the right loan for your needs and budgets. Contact us today. Let us help you to make your home ownership dream a reality. AA Finance Solutions, your local mortgage broker. The Pastoralists and Graziers Association, WA, will hold a protest this coming Tuesday to demonstrate against the First Nations land heritage laws. PGA WA President Tony Seabrook says the reality has sunk in for the Labor State government as farmers expressed deep anger over the laws. The government says they will review the legislation after consulting and listening to the community. I mean, this, the divisiveness that this act is inflicting upon our community is deadly dangerous. And I don't think that the government thought it through for one second because the sorts of things that are starting to happen out there are not going to pull us together, they're going to divide us. 
Meanwhile, WAMN News will be live streaming the protest from 12 p.m. on Tuesday. The WA state government have announced that women suffering from urinary tract infections, commonly called UTIs, can receive a diagnosis as well as treatment from pharmacists. While treatment potentially may be antibiotics, if the infection is very bad, the pharmacist may send the patient to a doctor to receive more testing and examination. The government says the benefit of this decision is that it provides women with a means to receive care for UTIs that is quick, effective and easy to get. The pharmacists who have this education have permission to give females who are between 18 and 65 years of age a confidential consultation as well as a one-off course of antibiotics if needed. Well, there's lots of opportunity where pharmacists can definitely play a role in women's health um, and with uh, being able to walk into a pharmacy and easily ask a question without having to wait a long time to get an appointment. I think it's always remembering that we're here and that um, can be utilised for lots of different health conditions. The Australian Nursing Federation WA has praised what they call a 12% rise in pay to youth custodial officers working in state juvenile detention centres. The union secretary, Janet Ray, believes that the new state government were distinguishing themselves from the hardline McGowan government wage stance. Ms Ray still called the incorporation of various different public sector jobs in wage policies to be eliminated. There's 20,000 public sector nurses and midwives and there's not 20,000 youth custodial officers and we're not expecting a 12% pay raise. We believe that it's only another 2% now. So we've had the 3% administrative payment. We just need the government to go that little step further. This is the only thing that is stopping this agreement being hammered out and finished and finalised, is this last 2%. Popular Perth residents Pamai and Putramas will be moving to their forever home in South Australia in late 2024. The two Asian elephants will be leaving Perth Zoo to become the founding members of a new open range herd in the new elephant habitat at Manato Safari Park in South Australia. Perth Zoo Acting Director Claire Wright has expressed that while Perth Zoo has been a great home for the elephants, they have always been aware that the pair will flourish living in herd, which requires more space than their inner city site can provide. Pamai and Putra Mass's new habitat will be a whopping 15 hectares, giving the pair all the room they could possibly dream of to frolic and eat and wave their trunks and do all the things elephants do. The space could, in future, be home to up to five elephants. And now here's Leo Pagalisi with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thanks guys on 6 News News Voice to Parliament polling showing yes behind in every single state. Victorian MP Will Fowles facing calls to quit Parliament and Donald Trump returns to election campaigning after his third indictment in four months. Watch live on our YouTube channel and our website 6newsau.com. For now though, it is back to you. The Royal Show is arriving in a month's time. So, are you excited Ivan? Very excited indeed. The rides that we always love. What about you? I'm excited for the animals. And I remember the velvet rabbit. I do, I do. So sweet. And um, this year they got the uh, the babies too. Oh, really? So, so wow. yes, that's right. Nigel the Farmer has brought them in this year. So definitely something to, uh, to watch out for in the Royal Show coming up. But has the Royal Show lost its way? And that's one of the future interviews we have for you. And here's Grace with Western Perspective. Good evening, Grace. Thanks, Ivan and Melly. Welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Grace Harrington. Well, it's that time of the year again. The beloved Perth Royal Show is back, boasting family-friendly activities, rides, show bags, fluffy animals, and an insight into our state's agricultural industry. Beneath the glitz and glamour that is Sideshow Alley, the show has a rich history of shining a light on the ag industry in an effort to bridge the gap between city and country. As the years have passed, however, the Royal Show has struggled to maintain its agricultural focus while keeping up to date with the times and appealing to the masses. Has the heart and soul of the show been lost? We spoke with the president of WA's Pastoralists and Graziers Association, Tony Seabrook. It's the longest standing community event in WA, I believe. Uh, how important is the show for educating Western Australians on the state's uh, agricultural industry? Well, that's always been the whole reason the Royal Show has occurred. It's, a, it's bringing the, the bush to the city and, and allowing city folk to see what, what we do. Um, increasingly, um, families who go to the show, not so much for the animals and the, the agricultural side of it, it's the sideshow alley, 
it's the, uh, the, the silly hats, it's the bags, it's a whole raft of things. It's become an incredibly expensive operation for any family man um, to take his family along for a day at the Royal Show. Um, we've always said it's a very important thing to, to link the country to the city but it's becoming increasingly difficult to do that because people have so many other distractions in their life. Especially, you know, your younger families, your kids are going to get excited about the rides and the show bags and this and that rather than, you know, watching the, the cattle competition or, or something. Um, do you think that uh, the side, the agricultural side of things that is there uh, tends to glamorise the industry a little bit, you know? I don't think it glamorises it. It's, there's a real opportunity there for a family, a uh, mum and dad who want to take their kids to the show to see what a sheep looks like, what a cow looks like, what a goat looks like. There's a real chance there that, that people will see things, kids will see things they won't normally see. But kids being kids, it's Sideshow Alley. Every time it's Sideshow Alley. And, and um, uh, it, it's a bit sad actually that, that it's lost the flavour. Of a, rural, of a rural show that it used to be. Whereas if you go to country shows, the, all the little towns have a country show, it's very family. Every, everyone in that district is there, they're all participating, they're some of them exhibiting in that show. The, the country shows are really what, I, what a show's about. But the Royal Show, um, they, they struggle to get their message across. Is there much uh, attendance from people in regional and remote uh, areas of WA who come in to Perth? Oh, sure. look, a, a lot less than it used to be. I, I don't know that a lot of people come down to go to the show. People come down because they're exhibiting, because they have an obligation. Uh, there are those that are committed to making the show a success that come down, but I don't think that many country people, uh, as a right, just come down to go to the show. Um, it's not the sort of show that it used to be 30 or 40 years ago, it's changed. What do you think uh, could be done in order to, I guess, take it back to uh, that ag focus and the way that it used to be, or do you think it's too far? I think that's the million dollar question. The Royal Ag Society would love someone to answer that for them because yeah. you know, they need to maintain that, that those grounds for a whole year and it's expensive and they need the income they get from the Royal Show and the impact that a, a few wet days can have in, in limiting the number of people that come. Uh, they're in a fairly vulnerable situation financially because they need every dollar they can get and they're always trying to work out some other draw, draw card, something else they can do that will actually bring people to town for the Royal Show. Um, but we're in difficult times. You know, high interest rates, a lot of people are struggling a bit and I'd suggest that taking your kids to the Royal Show could cost you over a couple hundred dollars. And it's, it's very hard to actually encourage people to do that in competition with everything else that's on the table. And uh, as you were saying earlier, that's uh, why I suppose entry fees are that little bit higher than they have been because the Royal Ag Society is trying to get their funds up again, is that correct? Everything costs in this world, just yeah. everything. And you've got insurance, you've got rates, you've got a whole raft of things. It all, it all just costs and it's not as simple as, as it might have been. The country shows are mostly volunteers. Everybody at the country show, uh, the, the gatekeepers, everyone there is volunteering. And okay, the, the, the side shows arrive and, and with all the clutter and glitter that they bring. But a, a country show is a very rural thing, whereas the Royal Show is trying to appeal to everybody at perhaps a different level than it might have been 30 or 40 years ago. And also there's nothing to, the Royal Show in Perth used to exhibit machinery. Lots and lots of machinery. If you wanted to see the latest thing from John Deere or International or Massey Ferguson, you went to the Royal Show. Darren, over the last, I suppose, 40 years, has absolutely supplanted the Royal Show when it comes to machinery. Uh, the Darren Agricultural Machinery Field Days are huge. Uh, it's big, no, perhaps bigger than the Royal Show, and it's very hands on stuff. And so most people don't go to the Royal Show, they go to Darren for Or even me and you, there's one there in Nuttigate as well. But it's these machinery shows that have taken a lot of the attention of rural people. And that's, I guess, exactly like you said, where your producers and your growers are going to be going so that they can attend field days that are actually going to, to allow them to see what's happening within the industry, whereas the if Perth show... If you want shows, to buy a tractor, if you want to buy a harvester, go to Darren, you can walk from the green to the yellow to the red to, you know, whatever you like. You can and, never have too many tractors at the end of the day. It's <laughs> a fair bit of that, so, yeah. Hopefully the Perth show is a place we can all go to come together. <laughs> And look, on a bright sunny day with everything happening there, the Royal Show is a great place to go. And you've you just got to wish them well because I know a lot of the people are involved. They do make a massive personal contribution to make it work. 
And if I said anything to country people that, that were thinking about going to the show, just steer away from the glitter, steer away from the rides, and go and see what the Royal Show is really about, because it's about the country being visited into the city. That was Tony Seabrook. You can read more of our weekly premium stories now on WAMN Extra News Club, supporting independent local news and keeping democracy strong. And now, here is Dr Andrew Miller with his weekly medical and news commentary. Hi, thanks for your time. Like many people in Western Australia, I was woken up at 5.34 this morning or soon after by the feeling of an earthquake, an unmistakable sensation that I haven't had since I was last uh, overseas in Indonesia and uh, that I've experienced a few times throughout my life. Pretty frightening thing for people and uh, reminds you of the fragility of us humans here on this planet and how really we're at the mercy of the elements and how we need to look after the planet as well. Interesting to see the government uh, making a major about face on their heritage laws and hoping that that means that uh, they're prepared to listen on things to do with health. Uh, we know that we need more expenditure to get our public hospitals up to the standard that the um, population, the growing population uh, of our great state deserves. Certainly uh, within the metro area, we need a lot more bed capacity. We're starting to see some green shoots in that regard, but really not a lot of um, goodwill, positive cooperation from the government towards the nurses and the doctors. It's still pretty much you lot do what you're told. And hopefully the humility that they're learning a bit at the moment by uh, crashing in the polls, losing their fearless leader, Mark McGowan, and um, finding themselves in a new reality where maybe their decisions are going to get looked at a lot more closely will mean that healthcare outcomes come back to the top of the pile of things that uh, can concentrate on. Of course, we have a Premier who, as Health Minister for a long time, presided over these issues, can't wash his hands of them, has no excuses. So let's see uh, if a new, newly humbled uh, Premier is able to uh, open up the purse strings of Treasury and share some of those mining royalties that the community has a right to expect will be spent on top quality health services. On the COVID front, uh, we're in a trough at the moment. We see it's starting to kick upwards uh, in some states in aged care and certainly overseas there's some new variants coming forward causing people to be uh, admitted to hospital, unfortunately. We need better wastewater monitoring here so that we can track what the disease is doing. No one's testing anymore. No one's uh, isolating anymore with this disease and so uh, we're a bit vulnerable to new variants that will come through and uh, unfortunately we're still seeing some people get very sick with it so be up to date with your boosters lean on the government uh, to be monitoring it at least through the wastewater for now thanks very much for your time that was dr andrew miller and that's western perspective for this week until next sunday evening it's back to you ivan and melly Thanks, Grace. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have latest news on our website, wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community. Full details on wamnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Melly, Grace, Peter and myself, wish you good health, good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.